Now, one thing good about picking what you think or I think or anybody thinks is the most beautiful motorcycle, it's subjective. So we can all be right and we can all be friends. And if you like a certain bike or a certain era of bike, and I certainly do, you, my prejudice shows all the time. I, I really like all the bikes in my collection, but the GS is something just a little special. I always think every bike manufacturer within certain eras had bikes that were outstandingly styled. I call them their masterpieces. For BMW, the 90S, for the Suzuki GS 1100E, there's one model. Kawasaki had a few that stood out in my mind, the Turbo. There's every one, every manufacturer has something that at the end of a long line of bikes, there's one you say, wow, I love the styling of that. Not that the other ones are bad, but there's one that will always stand out in a crap. On Ducati, 1099. And that, to me, was the most appealing of all the Ducatis. But everybody's got a different one they like. Everybody gets to pick what their masterpiece is. But for me, in my collection, they're all masterpieces. But above all, the one Karen likes, and she gets the final vote, is the GS 1100E. Now, I really don't know why so many people seem to think this is a classically styled bike. A lot of people like the older Triumphs, but that's the point of motorcycling. That's what, that's what makes it a wonderful sport. Everybody's got something they enjoy. People like to ride differently. But the one thing we all have in common, we love the motorcycles, and I love especially well-styled motorcycles. And if you can combine the styling with the fact that this bike, to me, I've had it since it's new, almost 42 years, you, get a a, you develop a special relationship with it. And I think that's what I have with my, this bike in particular. It's the bike in this collection that I've owned the longest. I do have a special relationship with it. It is Suzuki's masterpiece. So it's that magic time. It's a beautiful fall day. There's a 25% chance of rain. And we're headed out on the open road. And having a bike this comfortable means we're not going to be tired halfway through, halfway through the ride. We're not going to be having a sore hips or back or something. This bike is not only, I think, styled well, it's very, very comfortable even on small rides, three, four hour rides. Come on guys, don't fight over the food. Come on, let's go. You're using up my good riding time. And I always try to keep the bike as clean as possible. Anything I can do to maintain it, in the end, it's always worth it. Every part of this bike, to me, is a treasure. And it's really, it's rolling artwork as well as being Suzuki's masterpiece. Maybe it's my masterpiece, I don't know. And maintaining anything this old, going to be 42 years old, it's always a labor of love. One lonely bird. One lonely bird. So the birds are fed, all we got to do is get the rest of the veggies for today. And it, we're coming down to the end of this season, but it's not over yet. It's not the bottom of the ninth yet. I always think of this bike as my Mona Lisa, but in reality, <laughs> they're all nice. And th But this one is just a little bit nicer. I don't know how to explain it. And, and I always think, well, some of the other ones, I wonder if 42 years from now they're going to still be in style. I don't know. But when they designed this, if you looked in the future 42 years, to note it, it would still be, I think, a classic. <laughs> to me, that's a Mona Lisa. And one of the 
the things I like about it. It's so understated. It's not it's not full of stars and stripes and uh, day glow paint or anything. It's very very understated, almost like a uh, a real super luxury car would be, in a beautiful color. Boy, and I can go back to the day of when everybody wanted to turn these poor bikes into dragsters and they had every option, every big bore kit, all kind of fancy exhausts that just weren't stock and big bore kits, big carburetors and everything. And, and I resisted the temptation many times to do anything. I just thought I want to keep this bike forever because it really was like my Mona Lisa. And there's been many winters I've looked at the bike and I've made sketches and I've said I want to do this, I want to make this part, I want to change that and this Right. And when I'm all done, I think this is going to be real hard to improve on. Really, really hard. And over the years, I've thought about doing things again. That I, I, had, a, I had bought a little bikini fairing. I looked every time I looked at it, I said I like it better stock. I have two exhaust systems. I have two stock exhaust systems. And I like the 86 one just a little bit better. The overgearing allows me to cruise out to Route 80 in complete comfort and luxury. And of course the engine. I don't want to touch the engine. The engine is fine just the way it is for my use, my entertainment, and it's lasting. It looks like it's gonna overlast me. <laughs> And sometime when I'm out on a ride or in the garage, I'll just look at it from every possible angle. Look from the left, from the right, from the top, from the bottom. And it's it's funny how this bike, no matter what angle you look at it, it still looks well designed, well put together. It never looks like a Mr. Potato Head bike with parts that don't belong on there. Again, great, great styling. And the one option I always have, I have, because I have two of these, I have a parts bike, and I have a whole set of bodywork and tank, everything painted up like a West Cooley replica. And I'm always tempted, oh, in the middle of the winter, I just get a day when it's snowing out or something, I, yeah, let's make it a West Cooley bike for a year. And I've done that a few times, back and forth, back and forth. And that's about the only option, the only change I could see worth making. I just think that they did such a nice job. I don't know where you could paint a stripe on this or where you could put, I don't, I don't know, some more chrome parts. I polished up a few of the engine parts, did some polishing on the fork legs, but basically the bike is 90% totally stock. <laughs> And one of the only things about the bike that was uh, I thought needed upgrading, the I used to because I'm riding aggressively some of the time, a few times anyway. I did manage to warp up a couple of sets of front rotors, and the EBCs, the floaters, a nice upgrade. Joe Padula donated some steel brake lines that he had extras when he did his conversion, and restored his bike, and it made the front brake brake just that much nicer. It's a little bit of a cherry on a Sunday, and the brakes right now are really nice. And it's usually a couple hours into the ride, you start to appreciate the comfort of the seat. The bars are at a perfect position for my size. You really do appreciate the luxury feel of the bike. And of course, the nice thing about having a bike with overdrive gearing, 
when you go through the gears, at the end of it, you're going a lot faster than you would. <laughs> Not really that much faster, but you always get the feeling you are. You always look down at the speedometer and go, whoa, where did that come from? Anyway, it is, that's not the purpose of the bike. The purpose of this bike is that I want to keep it my Mona Lisa right, basically forever. And now being a full 78 years old, <laughs> I look back and I think this bike has been with me more than half of my life and it's been a good part of my life it's been reliable it's been fun to own it has just been I, the best way i can put it it's it's all things good a really nice day coming to a close time to get back on route 80 head back to the farm see what Karen's doing she was cooking up a storm when I left and I always love coming home to some fresh cooking and it's true all the styling of motorcycles and all the beauty of women and Mona Lisa's and artwork and whatever you think a sailboat is beautiful, a glider, an airplane, a little flower, whatever. It's all in the eye of the beholder and it's all subjective. And to me, it's very easy. This is my Mona Lisa. <laughs> Funny thing. I was just in France not that long ago. I could have seen the Mona Lisa. She was a couple of miles down the road. And I went out and looked at the bikes by the Eiffel Tower. I don't know. Did I win that or not? Anyway, Mona Lisa, I'm sorry I got didn't get to see you. But hope you're enjoying sharing some of this full riding with us. I hope you're out getting some good riding too. So while I was out riding, the lovely Mrs. Ertnowski made, well, let's hear it. Ooh, it looks good. Roasted tomatoes from our garden. From the garden. With some basil from our garden. Basil from our garden. And it's going to be blended. It's got olive oil and garlic. Ooh, I can taste it already. And some shallots and some onions. Ooh. And it's going to be blended and it'll be tomato sauce for the winter. Tomato sauce for the winter. There you have it. I'm getting hungry already. Now, everybody knows the Suzuki is a really nice bike, but the reality is Karen is my Mona Lisa. And guys, I hope you have a Mona Lisa in your life. Thanks so much for watching.